Hey everyone, this is Mary from SVG Cuts. And if you love cowboy boots and western stuff, or if you know someone who does, you're really going to love all these projects that we have to show you today. So obviously the most exciting part is this brand new 3D cowboy boot. And it has a lot of cool things about it. The fact that it has this big panel right here means that you can use whatever paper you want and make it look, you know, cutesy or elegant or girly. You could even make the whole thing pink and it would be really cool. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how this goes together. And we've also got this really cool little, it's kind of like a barrel shaped little container. And if you do it with the horseshoe on top, obviously it goes with the whole Western look with the Western paper, but you could also leave the horseshoe off and you could use it for just about anything, you know, whatever kind of paper you have, whether it's like springy or girly or like for a guy, really anything. So it's nice and versatile. So we've also got these three cards here, and this one, our design team member, Tinley, was saying that it would be really cute to do this as part of a birthday party with a, you know, like a Western theme, and for all the guests that are coming, you could do their picture on the front as something that they could take home, or it could even be the invitation, and the photo could be, you know, the child whose birthday it is, so that's going to be really fun, even if you just make one of them for some grandparents or someone else in the family. So we also have this really cute little cowboy guy here, and this card opens up. If you want to, you can put a star on the inside, which comes with your download, so that you can write on it. And this guy's really cute, and you could also do him as a girl if you have a way to make little pigtails. Maybe that's something that I'll do later and post it in our forum so you could turn him into a cute little cowgirl too. So we also have this really nice simple little card and it just features some word art on the front there. And the cool thing about this is that this turquoise blue piece that you see is just all one piece. So you don't have to glue each little letter in place. There's hardly any pieces to the card. So it's nice and quick. So the paper that I used is by October Afternoon and I got it on twopeasinabucket.com and it's called the Sarsaparilla Collection. And as soon as I saw it, I had to get it because I knew that one day I would be doing a really fun little Western theme and it worked out really well. I totally love it. And if you want to get that to use with your kit, you can, or you could totally, I'm sure, find some other Western papers out there. So I've got all my pieces cut out to make the boot and this desktop jar. So let me show you how they go together. So first, let's take a look at our jar. And first we're going to just do the lid here. And it's made up of two pieces like this, and then two 12-sided shapes like this. One of them is a little bit smaller than the other one. And then we've got this piece with a slit in it, and two like this. So first, let's take our long pieces here. And I just want to put glue on this side tab on one of them and just glue one to the other. They're identical so it doesn't matter which one you grab first. And then we'll just close it up by doing the same thing on the other side. And it's pretty quick and pretty simple. Now all we need to do is put glue on all of these tabs. And you can take your time a little bit more than I am right now and be a little more a little more precise with your glue. I'm just kind of I'm just kind of slobbing it on there, but you get the idea. So now let's take the larger of the two 12-sided shapes and I'm going to start by just gluing any one of the sides to any one of the tabs. And then I want to go over to the opposite side and do the same thing. And that helps it kind of take shape and helps us get the rest of the pieces going in the right place. So now I just want to line up the rest of the tabs as best I can here. And you get the idea. I can flip it over and press it down. And then all I'm going to do is take the smaller of the 12 sided shapes, put some glue on it and place it just right in the middle. And I just want to line it up as best I can so that the sides are lined up. 
So there you go. If you want to make it plain, you can leave it just like this. Or if you're doing it with the Western theme, you can take your horseshoe pieces and on the inside of one of them, I'm putting glue on just the horseshoe, the horseshoe part. And then I'm going to glue one to the other, back to back. And I want to line it up. And then all I'm going to do is glue it like so, right onto the top. And now this paper is kind of boring. If I was going to use this, I would probably emboss it or something. And all I'm going to do is put glue on the inside, glue these flaps down, and then just glue the whole entire thing to the top of my lid here. And I just want to center it, and I think it's kind of nice if the face of this lines up with one of the faces of this so that they're parallel. All right, let's take a look at the jar. Now let's take a look at the bottom here. And it's 12-sided, so we've got 12 pieces that look like this. They're all identical. And then we've got the bottom here. And then we've also got 12 panels like this, which go on at the end. So let's start by taking one of our 12 pieces. And I'm going to put glue on all of the side tabs here. And I'm just going to start either at the top or the bottom. I would like to start at the bottom. And one at a time, I'm gluing each tab in place one at a time. And I'm just giving, giving each tab a, a few seconds to dry before I move on to its neighbor. So now all I'm going to do is repeat that process all the way around the whole jar with all 12 sides. So you can be a little more careful again than I am with your glue and get it all the way out to the corners of each tab so that it really takes a nice hold. And mine's not perfect by any means, but it's good enough. People are not going to be able to tell that it's like messy at all, especially once we put the panels on at the end, which kind of cover everything up. So go ahead and repeat this all the way around your jar. Here's my jar almost all completed, and all I need to do is just the same thing once again, just to close it up. So again, I'm just putting glue on all of these tabs here, and then I'm going to just close it up. So it's a tiny bit trickier because there's a little bit of tension between the two pieces of paper here, but it kind of falls into place too, so it's actually pretty easy. And I'm a little crazy with my glue, so it's coming out the sides, but as long as you get the idea of how to do it, that's all that matters right now. So there's my final piece here. So now all I need to do is flip it over and fold all these tabs down and just put glue all the way around on all of these tabs. And again, just carefully maybe start with one at a time here and glue the opposite side down and just plop it right on there and adjust it if you need to. Now you can go ahead and take all 12 of your panels here and they just get glued like this. And we don't need to put any glue in the middle, only glue on the top and glue on the bottom and just glue it in place like this. Now for our 3D cowboy boot. The boot itself has quite a few pieces, and the tall ones are all numbered 1 through 9. So that makes it pretty easy. And the toe of the boot is made up of these three pieces. Then these two go on at the end. They're the little straps at the top. 
And then these pieces, which have no tabs on them, are also embellishments that go on at the end, so we don't need to worry about those. We've also got the sole, which is obviously the bottom of the shoe, and then two pieces like this, which we don't need to worry about right now either. So first, let's take a look at our numbered pieces one through nine. And I've gone ahead and darkened in each number here. Your machine will score a number on the bottom of each piece. And I went and I took a, a black marker and I darkened it in for this video so that you can see more easily. You might want to do that too. It makes it a little easier to see what you're doing. So I'm going to start with piece number one here. It doesn't really matter which one you start with as long as you go in order. And I'm just going to carefully put glue on all of these side tabs here. And I say carefully because normally when I'm doing these videos, I kind of am not that careful with my glue because I just want you to see how it works. But for this, if I'm not careful, things might not line up properly and then that would be bad. So I'm kind of doing the same thing that I did with my jar previously in this video, except obviously it's a different shape. But it's the same principle. I'm just gluing one tab at a time and I'm just going to work my way around the whole entire boot. So I'm just going to put glue once again on all of these side tabs and I'll take piece number three here and I'm going to put it on piece number two. And there's really no trick for this or there's no secret or anything. It's just, just a matter of taking your time and being careful to line things up as perfectly as possible. And nothing is ever truly perfect. If you were to get out like a micrometer or a microscope or something, you would obviously be able to see that it's not perfect. So just do your best to line it up. Make sure you've got a nice amount of light over your your hands so you can see what you're doing. And just line things up as best you can. And maybe it's just because I've done this so many times, but I feel like it kind of falls into place once you start, once you get that first tab in place, the other two kind of just fall into the proper spot without too much effort. So I'm on piece number five now, and it's really the same process. I'm just being a little extra careful because I want it to line up real nice. And even though the pieces look kind of wacky and the finished boot looks kind of impressive, it's really not hard because if you just take it one step at a time, each individual step is not difficult, so once you add them all up, it's really not too bad. It's just a matter of taking some time and kind of being careful, which is kind of fun. It's kind of like meditative and therapeutic a little bit, like a puzzle or something, I think. Okay, piece number seven. We are working our way around. And since each piece is different, I just want you to go ahead and see how it's done in case you have any questions. Before, like the jar, for the jar each piece was identical, so you didn't need to see all 12 of them go together. But since it's a little different, we might as well take a look at the whole thing. And I'm really excited to see what you guys do with this boot and all the different looks you can give it. Because I've done some shopping online before myself for cowboy boots and I 
maybe like two or three years ago, I got a really cute pair that is just like a plain brown with like some stitching that is like some flourishes on it. And they're really cute. But when I was doing my shopping, I saw all kinds of different colors of cowboy boots and all kinds of different looks. And I've seen some really cute ones that have like a like blanket material, like applique on the side, which is really cool. So that makes me feel like you can use like any kind of paper on your side panels to give it any kind of look that you want. And of course you can always add extra extra shapes and die cuts to the side to look like some pretty flourishes and stuff. So that's going to be really fun to see all the different cowboy boots that you come up with because you guys are super creative and you guys have awesome style ideas so that's really fun. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun giving your cowboy boots to people and seeing their reactions. Okay, now I need to be really careful here with this piece. This one I need to line it up and I need to hold it and really let it dry because when I move on to the next tab, if it's not dry, it really pulls it apart into the wrong alignment. So let's make sure that one is nice and nice and sturdy on piece number nine here. And I'm also going to hold this one a little bit longer just to make sure that it's in place. Okay, so now all I need to do is close this part up and then we can move on to the toe of the boot. And I totally got messy with my glue, which is not my favorite thing to do, but that's okay. All right, so now we can take our three pieces, which make up the toe. I'm gonna set this aside. And I've got these three pieces here. So I'm gonna start by taking this larger one. There's a larger one, a medium sized one, and a small one. So I've got the large one here. And I'm gonna put glue on all of these tabs. And I'm just gonna be gluing it to the medium sized one. Again, just one at a time. So all I want to do is just carefully line these up one at a time, giving it enough time to dry before I move on. And I'm just working my way down. And lining everything up. Now it looks like kind of a strange shape how it's folded down like this, but once I get this next piece on, we're gonna like pop it out into the correct shape. So don't worry about the shape of your toe here. So again, I just put glue on all of those tabs and I just want to line them up really nice and really let it dry before I move on. Otherwise, it will not be aligned the right way. So we are almost done here. Okay. Now let's allow this to dry a little bit longer while we do this little tiny toe piece here. There's just a little tab here and a little tab here. 
and we need to pop this into our toe shape in order to move on here. So as you can see, it's taking the proper shape. And I think it was easier to, to do that how we did it and then pop it out instead of trying to glue that in the right shape because even I would be confused about that and I don't want you guys to be confused at all. So just a little dot of glue on there is good enough. And we can close up the point of our toe. Okay. Now the next step is to attach this to this, which looks a little a little intimidating maybe, but don't worry, it's not bad at all, I promise. And we just need to start this piece right here that I just put glue on is labeled with a number nine. So that's where you're going to start with your glue. And go all the way around with your glue. Actually, let's see if, if I can go all the way around with my glue before it starts to dry. So we want to start by lining up that first tab that had the number 9 on it. And I really want to give it a chance to dry because it's kind of a wacky, a wacky shape that we have going on here. And while I'm holding that as it dries, I'm going to align the next tab. And I'm holding that from the inside too. And as I'm holding it, I'm aligning the next one. And luckily, since it's open, it's not too hard to work with it from both sides, which makes it pretty easy. And I'm just holding this one tab here for a second while it dries. And moving on to the next one. And this is making me excited to wear my cute cowboy boots that I was saying that I have, which I don't wear in the winter here in Chicago because there's, there's snow everywhere. It doesn't really work too well, but as soon as it's like shorts weather and skirts weather, I'm really excited to bust out my cute boots. Okay, so that wasn't too hard. Now... All we need to do is put the bottom of the boot in place. So let's take our, our shoe here, our, our sole, and it gets bent like this, and it gets put in place like this, obviously. and. I'm going to do this one at a time, actually. I don't think it matters too much where you start, but it does help if you go one at a time, because there's really going to be no way that you can just put glue on all the tabs and just pop it in place. That would be nice and quick and easy, but there's just going to be no way to line it up like that. So we have to take our time and do one tab at a time. So just carefully work your way around, gluing one at a time and giving it a chance to dry and holding it in place while it dries. So go ahead and do a couple, work your way down a little bit and then I'll catch up with you. So now the body of my boot is together and if you have a little brown ink pad, like a dark brown one, it's a good idea to rub it around these edges here, which is just going to help the sole blend in with the boot. So next, we can go ahead and put our the edge of our sole on the boot, and it just gets glued on 
like this. You can tell which which pieces go where, and there's also another side which obviously gets glued around the other side as well, like so. And now we've got these five pieces here, which get glued just like this right onto the shoe. And I went ahead and I embossed mine with a Sizzix folder called Snowcap. And as you can see, these each fit on all these little panels here and you just glue them right on. So we can also take our back strap pieces here and take a brad and put it through these two holes. And again, another brad through this side. Then you can go ahead and glue this other piece on top. Then we've also got these two pieces here and there's a hole up here that lines up with the hole at the top but as you can see this is not correct here how there's a corner at the front we want the other piece because the, the front part is rounded at the front so stick a brad through one of your little straps like this and fasten it from the other side and then we can go ahead and glue down put a line of glue on the side here and hold that in place while it dries and then do the same thing on the other side with a line of glue and hold that while it dries too and then all that's left to do is put our liner pieces in now the only thing to remember about these is that they are not symmetrical, meaning like you know, obviously the left and the right are not the same. So before you glue it in place, put it inside and take a look and make sure it looks nice before you glue it down. If I was to do the other one, you know what, they both look pretty nice. If you want to get real technical, you can see which one you think lines up better, but they both actually look pretty fine. So that is actually it. So there you have it, super fun Western themed projects. I hope you love them. And if you make any of them, I would love to see pictures on our Facebook wall or on your blog or on Pinterest or on Instagram or what have you. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.